We're a family-owned company. We have been since the organization, the World Company, was founded in 1891. Um, so a lot of stations have this as their slogan, but we really are local. Uh, and we, we have to be to survive. We, we're hyper-local. And it's something that we've really carved out our own little niche for where we are, that people know they can turn to us for real news about what's happening in our community. Uh, and it's not just going to be, you know, 15 seconds here and there about the headlines and move on to the next fire or shooting or whatever crime story. Uh, that we really have a commitment to telling stories uh, that are going to make a difference. And uh, that starts at the top of the organization and goes down to every person, not just in the newsroom, but throughout the company is really making that difference on the local level. People have can get their news anywhere, anytime. And so we want to make sure that if people want to know what's going on in their backyard, in Lawrence, or in the other towns that are really right, right there surrounding Lawrence, that we're able to provide that to them quickly and accurately and more comprehensively than anybody else in the region. Because if people want to know what's going on in Topeka or Kansas City or Seattle or DC or Boston, they can tune in to any place and go to any website pretty quickly and find that kind of information. But our niche is telling people, like I said, what's going on in their backyard, what's happening in Lawrence. All of us are thinking about the web and knowing about posting breaking news, but we're really trying to expand our web presence. Um, but it's really been a unique working environment where you can bring together a lot of different skill sets to enhance your product all the way around through the internet, TV, and broadcast. And the main reason for that is so, like I said, our niche is Lawrence and we want to make sure that people who um, are coming to us, however they want to get their news, it's there for them in, that, in the best possible format for them. But we know that over time, I mean, everybody can see that online is where everything is going to be and so we want to make sure that as a news organization we're not thinking print and tv and then it needs to go online we're really trying to move toward this is going online and then because you can put it online at 12:46 in the afternoon and we don't have a newscast until six and it's not going to hit your doorstep until 5 30 the next morning and so we really need to be thinking of now, 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 and how then from once it's on the internet and that content exists, what can we do to enhance that content? And then what can we do on TV and, and print that's going to move the story forward, that's going to give people who probably are watching our website to see what's getting posted, and then they're going to get home and watch the news. They don't want to see the exact same story that they read about at 12.46 at 6 p.m. We need to always be thinking about how we can enhance and improve our stories and that I mean it's we don't have a great answer to how that's going to happen but that's one of the challenges that makes doing you know working for the, the type of company that provides us with the opportunities that we have makes it fun to be there and it's like I said it's a challenge that makes it fun to walk in the door every day. The Citizen Journalism Academy is an effort we started um, back in the fall of 2006 uh, and the idea behind it was, again, you know, we talked a little bit about the internet and how that's really exploding, and and also just the fact that, especially in Lawrence, where it's a, people are very active in the community and um, people have opinions that they want to get heard, and you know, it's important to hear their voices. I think to enrich the community discussion uh, about whatever the issue is, and so we really set out. Um, with the idea in mind that, you know, people are out there producing the content and they, they want to be involved. And so why don't we try to, you know, seek out some of the most talented people, some of the people in the community who are most willing to participate and rather than just have them out there on their own, you know, producing whatever it is, blogging and hoping people see it, why not bring them in, kind of let them see how the professionals do it, not that there's any great trick to it, and I think that's one of the things that kind of opens up their eyes when they get in, but why not bring them in and provide them with just some very basic fundamentals of journalism so that as they go forward, they kind of, you know, they can kind of, the curtain is pulled back and they can kind of see how it all works, and then as they go forward, they have 
you know, a better idea of how they should conduct themselves and, and uh, you know, ways to work through certain situations that, you know, a professional would be in and that kind of thing. So that was the idea behind it is that let's give people who are already active in the community discussion, let's give them a little bit of training let's, and then let's bring them in, show them what we're about and uh, see where it goes from there. You know, we, we have a, uh, an application process where we bring in, we, we throw it out uh, to the public, we put ads on TV and in the paper and online and let people know uh, and there's a real simple just four or five questions online and application process. We review those and we've had overwhelming, at least we feel like we've been overwhelmed by the amount of interest that the community has shown. Um, you know, we've had for the three academies more than 250 people have applied, 100, 120 the first time it was down a little bit in the spring and then it was back up again for the fall of 2007 and so we have a screening process where we can kind of look and see who you know we think would be good to bring in and then um, you know from there we invite them to come in uh, we have a five-week session uh, we meet usually for two or three hours one night a week and uh, really cover like I said just the basics of, of journalism from where story ideas come from to ethical issues that reporters face to writing headlines um, those types of things we give them homework assignments where uh, we might have them contact we actually we put like the names of like 20 city officials in a hat and we have them draw them out of the hat and then contact them and write a profile about them you know we didn't start out with this with the idea that we're gonna eventually have um, this group of people here that are gonna provide us with all this content and allow us to lay off staff people think some people think that we have this ulterior motive for that and it's absolutely not the case um, like I said we just wanted to be able to give people who already were had wanted to who already had a voice at some level in the community discussion to be able to expand on that and what we found is uh, the, the public we're surprised by how much they appreciate us for taking the time out of our schedules to do this. I mean, everybody everywhere has instantaneous access to being able to dis disseminate their opinion or, you know, what a quick report of what they saw just breaking news down the block from them. And so I think certainly that's the way it's going to go. And what we've tried to do is knowing that that's the way things are going. If you've got people out there that are interested in participating at that level, let's give them some training. Um, because I still think obviously there's there's levels of reporting and storytelling and access that a professional journalism ha a professional journalist has that the everyday citizen does not have and so there are things that obviously a professional journalist can bring to the table but for all these people out there that are interested give them some training give them some contacts in the newsroom show them what it's all about so when they're out there doing the things they're already doing they've got more of a foundation in journalism to help them do it I think that you know, part of it is realizing that this is where it's going and so we better be ahead of the game or else we're going to get left in the dust uh, as far as with citizen journalism. Um, you know, like I said, the writing's on the wall that this is where it's going and so it's, it's better to try to, you know, harness the power of the people and work together to utilize that instead of ignoring it and having it spring up and create its own thing that's more powerful than what you already have. And I think some in some towns that don't have as that, you know, we're a town of 80,000 people that has a very active, very locally focused, as I mentioned, media. And so in some ways, we already have a niche that um, people can come and be part of the community discussion. And we, the Citizen Journalism Academy has helped that. But I think in some communities that are vastly underserved by traditional media, you're seeing where it's entirely citizen driven comment or content on the web that. Uh, where sites are springing up in communities that are underserved and that's the way that those people are getting their news and participating in the community discussion and like I said we want to make sure that we better get a, be a part of that now and let people know that we are interested in what they think and we want them to be again part of the discussion uh, so that going forward you know we can maintain our relevance